by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is good. Cleave to that which is good. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And we know that the Lord will bless the reading of his own precious truth. In our scripture reading this morning, child of God, it is clearly seen that God demands a life, a life that God commands us to live. You see, child of God, this morning in our scripture reading, it is clearly seen that there is a way in which God demands His children to live. God commands us this morning, child of God, to live in a way that pleases Him. Sadly, today so many of God's people choose not to live the way that God commands them to live. You know something, child of God, this morning? So many of God's people really do miss out on the blessings that God longs to bestow upon the child of God because they feel to live out the life that God commands them to live. You see, child of God this morning, God commands all of us, listen to me, God commands all of us this morning to live a life that pleases and honors God. Does your life do that? Better still, does my life do that? Do you and I, child of God, live these lives of ours to please and honor God, or do we seek to live them to please ourselves? You see, child of God, this morning, God does command a life to be lived. A life that not only pleases and honors God, but we're commanded to live a life this morning, child of God, a life that glorifies and exalts our blessed Savior. Can I ask you a question again? Does your life 
and does my life glorify and exalt the blessed Lord Jesus? Is there something of Christ, child of God? Is there something of the Lord Jesus that can be seen in you and me? You see, we're all called and we're all commanded this morning to live lives that are not only pleasing and honoring to God, lives that not only glorify and exalt the Lord Jesus, but lives this morning that makes an impact on those that are not saved. Child of God, does your life does my life this morning make an impact? Have we any influence on those that are not saved this morning? Or do others look at us and say, nothing in that life convinces me that God is real? There's a whole pile of people like that, you know, outside these four walls. So many people in the world today, I, I, I you know, they look at Christians and they see absolutely no evidence of Christ in their lives. The way they live, the way they talk, the way they act certainly portrays no evidence of the life-changing power of Christ within them. Some night at the mission, the Lord has laid upon my heart to preach on the fearful peril of a false profession. I honestly believe there are folk today who, be who believe they're saved, but do you know something? They're not saved at all. Lord, Lord, Jesus says there's coming a day when they said, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Have we not preached in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out demons in thy name? Do you know what the Lord Jesus is going to say? Depart from me. I never knew ye. The fearful peril of a false profession. You see, child of God, there's one thing I want to get absolutely clear. Do you see the life that you have and the life that I have? Your life, my life are not, listen to me, are not our lives to live. These lives of ours are not our lives to live. You see, this morning, child of God, the Apostle Paul had a right to the Corinthian church and tell them, you're not your own. You have been bought with a price. You see, the Christians at Corinth were living to please themselves. They weren't living to please God. And Paul the Apostle had to remind them, ye are not your own, ye are bought with a price. Listen, child of God, you and I are not our own either. We have been bought with a price, and that price this morning was the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Corinthian Christians lived to please themselves. They lived to live out the, their own uh, lusts. In fact, Paul in 1 Corinthians 6 said, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which dwelleth in you? Child of God, Let's just remind ourselves of that this morning. Your body right now and my body right now is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right now, child of God, the Holy Spirit abides within your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Paul said to Timothy, the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us 
When did the Holy Spirit come into us? It came in the moment we were saved, didn't it? Christ dwelleth in you. But there's a word of warning. The word of warning is this. There is men today in pulpits who teach and who preach that we, the people of God, can live whatever way we live. There's men today who would tell us there's no harm for the people of God to go into a pub and, and, and sup with the devil's buttermilk. There's people today, there's men today who tells us that there's absolutely no harm if you're saved, that you can suck on the devil's dummy tip. Do you know what the devil's dummy tip looks like? They come in a wee packet of 20 or 10. And they're a wee white stick about six inches long. They're easy seen. I call them the devil's dummy tit. How you know them is there's a fire burning at one end of them and there's a fool puffing at the other. But listen, child of God. That's a wicked and an evil teaching because it's contrary to the Word of God. It's contrary to the Word of God. Child of God, allow this to really get into your heart this morning. The lives that we live are not our lives to live. Where does this take us to this morning? Well, it takes us to my text. Listen to it. It's in verse 2 of Romans 12. This is what the Word of God says. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, child of God, when we look to that verse this morning, the first thing that stands out is the pathway that is excluded. The pathway that is excluded is this. Be not conformed to this world. So many of God's people today feel comfortable in walking along the pathway of the world's ways. They tell me that they can feel at home in walking and living in the ways of the world. But my dear child of God, God's Word tells me this morning that we're not to be conformed to this world. If we're going to live lives that is pleasing and honoring God, lives this morning that, that, uh, that exalts and glorifies the Savior, lives that will make an impact on the lives of the unsaved, you'll find that the pathway of the world is excluded. What does that mean this morning, child of God? It's this, the life that God demands us to live is a life that is not being fashioned by the things or the ways of the world. By the age of in which we live. Peter said in 1 Peter 1.14, not fashioning ourselves with the former lust in your ignorance. What's the, Peter, the Apostle Peter saying? The Apostle Peter is saying this, we're not to be manipulated, we're not to be dominated by the type of person that we were before we were saved. He also said in another scripture, it just doesn't come to my mind, that the moment we were saved, we were called to put off the old man. The man that we used to be before we were saved. And we're to put on the new man. Do you know what Paul said? If any man's in Christ, he's what? He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And all things become New. Have you fell asleep on me? But some of us perhaps still like to hold on to the old man, don't we? 
I find, now I, I'm, I'm up here and I'm going to admit this, I find the old George McConnell hard to shake off. He's like a leech. I am only been honest. And if you're struggling with the old person before that you were saved, listen, I'm no different from you. George McConnell has to raise it. The old George McConnell raises his head yet. And I have to knock him every time he raises his head. But you know something, child of God, but this is the way we are we are called to live. Be not conformed to this world. There's so many of God's people this morning, and when you watch them, they're walking with a limp. Do you ever see? Sorry, Heidi. <laughs> they're walking with a limp. And the reason why they're walking with a limp is because they're trying to walk with one foot in the world and one foot God's way. But listen, child of God, that's not going to be a life that will please God. Would you not agree with me on that? It's not going to be a life that will exalt the blessed Savior. And I'll tell you another thing. It's not going to be a life that's going to convince Christian or the unsaved that the Christian life's real. Do you know why that is? Because the unsaved expect us to be different. You didn't hear the one about the lady. This was a true story. I heard this this week. A lady got saved at a mission. And she says, Lord. And she loved her dancing. She loved her dancing. And she says, Lord, you know, I, I love the dances. And, and Lord, if I go, if I go to, uh, on Friday night to the dance, Lord, I'm going to witness to the first man that lifts me. So she went to the dance. And she sat there and she was waiting for the first man to lift her. The man came over, you know, with, with, I only knew, knew what it was. Fancy a, a wee dance, yes. And they both of them got, got together and the wee waltz started. You know the wee waltz? Just like that. And they started waltzing about. And she says, Jimmy, did you hear about me? Did you hear about me? He says, I heard something about you. What was it? What was it? Did you hear I got saved? She says, I did. He says, I did. He says, but I knew it wasn't true. Oh, but it is true, Jimmy. It is true. You know what Jimmy says? Well, if it was true, why are you here in a place like this? Sherry Jimmy, the creator that he was, he knew. He knew that she was in a place where she wasn't. Was. She knew. He knew that she should have been different. You see, child of God this morning, listen, we're not to be conformed. Listen, listen to me. We're not to be conformed to this world. This is God's message to your heart. Listen, I'll tell you what, it's God's message to my heart. We're not to be conformed to this world. It's the pathway that is excluded. And I want to take a wee moment just now to speak to the younger generation of Christians, to my generation. What are you laughing at? Only a young fella. Now listen, you young Christians, I know what it's like out there. And for those of you who leave home on a Sunday night and you go to universities, I know outside these four walls there's the power of temptations. But do you know what God wants you to do? God wants you to be strong for Him. And I'm not here to chastise you. I'm here to care for you and to encourage you. The Bible says, If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Now listen, young people. God wants that life of yours. Listen, you don't have to wait to be an old boy like me. Do you see that young life? God wants you to. God wants that young life of yours to be given totally to him and to be lived out for him. I want you to know that. And listen, young people, don't you waste your life away by allowing the world to mold and to motivate you into its way. Now, you young Christians, you know I'm your friend, don't you? Of course you do. You live that wee life of yours out for God. And never let the world mold you into its ways. The pathway that is excluded.
But then there's the process that is exhorted. Look at the twelfth. next thing it says. It says there, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. I, I want to make one thing absolutely clear. Before I go any further, I want to make this absolutely clear. Listen, the life that God wants you to live is not a life of bondage. I'll tell you now, it's a life of blessing. Do you agree with me on that? It's a life of blessing. I'll tell you how I know that. I know that because I was in the world and I was of the world and I loved the world and I enjoyed the world. But my life in those worldly days doesn't compare to the life that I now have in Christ Jesus. Listen to me. If it wasn't a blessing, I wouldn't be here. That's a fact. If it wasn't a blessing, I wouldn't be up here. I'll tell you something now. A life lived out for God is a blessing. I'm telling you. Now none but Christ can satisfy. No other name for me. Why? Because there's love and there's life and there's everlasting joy. Where? Lord Jesus found in thee. Not wonderful. And I want you to know that this morning, child of God. A life totally surrendered and consecrated and laid on the altar for God is not a life of bondage. Glory to God. Some, when you look at some Christians, you think it was. Do you ever see a grave digger when he's told he's to dig 12 foot? Do you ever see them? You see some Christians like that. You say to say, well, here, boy, if that's Christianity, I want none to do it. But I can tell you something now, my friend. I want to tell you, I was in the world. I don't say this with pride, boys. I hate the thought of it when I think of it. I just want you people to know, I was there, done that, bought the T-shirt, and it wouldn't compare to the life that I have now. A life that's lived out for Christ is a life that's worth living. But it says there, but be ye transformed. Do you know that word transform is a very interesting word? Now listen, I'm not an English scholar, or a Greek scholar at that. The word it means, it just simply means, it actually means transfigured. Do you remember when the Lord Jesus Christ went to the mountain, he was transfigured? Well, it's the same word. That we are to be transfigured, how? By the renewing of your mind. Do you know, your mind's a powerful thing. Your mind, as one man said, your mind is it's the acting, ruling part of all of us. It's the acting, ruling part of all of us. It's the mind that motivates the way we live. Did you know that? It's your mind that motivates the way you and I live. And Paul the Apostle is writing here, and he says, But be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. You see, the moment I got saved, there had to be a bit of renovation work done on. You builders know what I'm talking about. There has to be a red out before you do anything. You know, where I'm, you know where I'm coming from? There has to be a red out. Well, the night I got saved, I'll tell you, there had to be a red out of my mind. There's a lot of things need to be read out. The old thoughts. The old things that used to occupy my mind had to go. And then it says there, but by renewing, by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, child of God, this is a daily process by the renewing of our minds. What does that mean? That means our minds needs to be renewed each day. Renewed how? Renewed by the Word of God. It's the Word of God that has the power. It has the power to come into our minds and to transform our minds into the likeness of His Son. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Listen to me. We question, what motivates your mind this morning? What motivates your mind? Is the, does the world motivate your mind, or do, is it His Word? You see, it's a daily renewing. We have to saturate our minds with the Word of God. It's a daily process. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you know what your mind's like? You ladies will remember what I'm talking about. You know the old way of washing dishes? Now you've all these dishwashers that just put them in and push a button. It's all done for you. Well, you know the old way, the kitchen sink. 
And listen, I was there myself a number of times too. That's why my hands are soft. And you go to the kitchen sink and you put in that lovely hot soapy water and man, and you do that there to get all the bubbles. And you get all the bubbles and it's lovely and fresh and it's lovely and clean. And you start to wash the dishes. Now, you continue to wash them dishes. What happens? The water starts getting dirty, doesn't it? Now, if I walked away from doing them the next time I come to my dinner time and I wash them in the same water, I'll tell you, it won't be too long till the whole thing gets all stale. Isn't that right? No. What do you do? You keep changing. You keep renewing the water. And child of God, we need to keep renewing our minds daily with the Word of God. And it's this Word of God, child of God, that has the power to motivate the life of every believer. Tell me, does it motivate your life this morning, the Word of God? Are you being renewed daily in your minds, child of God, with the Word of God? Do you read the Word of God? My goodness, I'll tell you one thing, child of God, I wouldn't like to be washing dishes in your sink if you're only getting the one, you're only filling the sink once a week. If that's all the Bible you're reading is a Sunday morning or a Sunday night, boys, I'll tell you, I wouldn't like to be washing dishes in your sink. You know, before I got saved, when I went to school, I didn't, I, I hated studying. Did you know that? I hated it with a passion. That I left school when I was 15. And I remember coming home with the old school bag, and I says, Ma, that's why, that's my mother, by the way. I says, Ma, ask me to finish with school. And I got the spade. Do you know what I'd done with the school bag? I buried it at the bottom of the yard. I buried it, <laughs> it's like this here, I buried it in a, in a Sadducee's grave. I certainly wasn't going to be resurrected again. And I'll tell you, you see, when I, I will have to give you a word, testimony, I suppose now, I went to school, I was stupid. And by the time I was finished school, I was thick. <laughs> but do you know why I was saved? I hated reading. Didn't mind the counting, but I hated reading. But the night I was saved, do you know what God gave me? God gave me a new desire to read. God does that. And I remember the night I was saved, I, 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 don't know, I don't know what way I got home that night. Floated home, running home, or walked home, I don't know, but I got home anyway. But I tell you the first thing I wanted, I wanted my hands in a Bible. I wanted my hands in a Bible. And I remember, I, I got my grandfather's bedroom shortly after he died, and I rummaged through his wardrobe to see if there was a Bible. And boys, I found the Bible. Do you know what happened to me? I fell in love with the Bible. Tell me someone, have you fell in love with the Bible? Have you fell in love with the Word of God? That night I fell in love with the Word of God. You know what I found? The more you read the Word of God, the more the Word of God refreshes and renews the mind. Listen, child of God. Listen to me. God's word to all of our hearts this morning is, be not conformed to this world. Listen, shake the old world off ye. And be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that, child of God, our minds won't be controlled by the world. It'll be controlled by the word. Let not the world ruin the mind. Let the, word, let the word be renewed within your mind. The pathway that is excluded, the process that is exhorted, the proof that is expressed. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to the last wee bit. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, child of God, what this means is this. This means that when we are not conformed to this world and we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind, we will be able to prove what is that acceptable and perfect will of God. 
That means your life and my life and our lives this morning, child of God, will declare to a broken and will, be, will declare to a ruined world that we are a people who belong to Jesus. We then will live the life, that Christ-likeness life that God really demands. A life that glorifies Him. And child of God, when we live that life, it will not only be a blessing to us, it will be a blessing to others. And listen, child of God, let us totally surrender our lives to God this morning. Stop living to please ourselves. What's the wee hymn say?